So good morning, everyone, again. Thank you for joining the 8th Open Air Graph Community Call. Today, we will have with us Open Air Development and Operation Director Thanasis Vargoulis, who will be unveiling the new Open Air API. During the presentation, we kindly ask that you keep your microphones muted and cameras off. And for the Q&A session, which will last around 25 minutes, feel free to unmute and turn your camera on if you'd like to actively participate. You can submit your questions either in the chat or in our shared Google Doc, which will be posted here in the chat. And please note that the session will be recorded. If you wish to participate in the Q&A but prefer not to be included in the recording, let us know in the chat and we'll ensure your contribution will be edited out. So uh, Alina Branschweiger from the Open Air Graph team has some announcements to make and will present today's agenda. Alina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Marily. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, so we just wanted to make a couple announcements. Um, as some of you may know, next week is International Open Access Week. This year's theme is community over commercialization. And if some of you may remember, that was the theme last year as well, but there was really good feedback and they wanted to extend the focus. So same theme this year. So in that spirit, we've actually organized some events um, or surrounding the open air graph. And we just wanted to share with them with you if in case you would like to participate in them as they're open for, they're open for everybody. So first is on Tuesday, the 22nd, um, we're holding a webinar in collaboration with the Interdisciplinary Center for Mathematical and Computational Modeling of the University of Warsaw. This will be presented by Open Air Graph Lead Data Engineer, Claudio Edzori, and he'll be exploring the graph's global collaborations, its commitment to openness, and its role in the future of open science. And also, don't worry, I'll be posting all this information in the chat, along with the registration links as well, if you'd like to, to register. And then on Friday, we're holding, and Friday the 25th, um, we're holding an open air webinar on the open air graph as an open infrastructure with a focus on the community driven aspect of the graph and its participatory approach. So again, going off of this year's uh, theme, community over commercialization. This will be presented by open air CTO, Paolo Mengi. And then on Wednesday, October 23rd, we'll be releasing yet another podcast uh, episode. Um, where myself and Julia Meliguanera, Open Air Outreach and Engagement Officer, are discussing the importance of community in shaping the open air graph and how we shape it to better serve and support open infrastructures. So I'm going to post all this information in the chat. Um, it may look like a lot, but just so you have the date, time, the name of the event, what to expect, and then also the, the registration links. So I'm posting those here. Um, and... And then with that, so while I post that in the chat, um, again, they're open for all. Everybody's welcome to register, and we do encourage um, we do encourage you to to join. Um, but with that, I'll hand the floor open to oh, floor, oh, floor open to Tanasi for our presentation today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alena, uh, for the introduction um, and uh, useful information shared. Uh, let me share my screen. I hope that everyone can see it without a problem. Okay, so um, the today uh, community call uh, is dedicated uh, to a discussion around uh, the new Open Air Graph API. <clears throat> uh, for those that are very um, familiar with uh, the Open Air ecosystem, um, Open Air offers uh, various APIs uh, from uh, almost the beginning. Uh, the most important one uh, being uh, the search API uh, that until now uh, was the main uh, programmatic interface uh, to get access to uh, the contents of the Open Air Graph. Um, but uh, in the last few months, uh, we started uh, uh, to give some effort in trying to uh, creating a more simplified, more modern, and more convenient uh, version of this API. And uh, we call it the Graph API. So today, I will uh, go quickly through uh, the various steps 
uh, that we have followed in designing this API. I will just uh, uh, explain the process that we followed and uh, which were uh, the most important requirements that we had in mind, as well as uh, what was the feedback that we got uh, from uh, the beta testers uh, that have uh, been experimenting uh, with this new API, the first version of this new API uh, in summer. So uh, as it was said, I am Thanas Vergoulis, uh, the Development and Operation Director of Open Air. Uh, but today with me, I have also Serafim Hadzopoulos and Alexis Simeonidis, uh, who are the two uh, main developers of the new uh, API. So if there are any technical questions, they uh, will jump in and uh, comment uh, on that, uh, on those. And uh, we also have uh, with us uh, Claudio Azzori, uh, who is uh, leading the technical activities around uh, the production of uh, the Opener Graph. Uh, of course, uh, some aspects that relate to the API uh, are related to the content of the graph. So uh, again, uh, he can help, must, help us uh, uh, with uh, this kind of uh, subjects if needed. So uh, before going uh, into more details about the new API, I would like uh, to quickly remind everyone uh, about uh, uh, the process that uh, we follow to expose uh, the open air graph uh, data uh, to everyone. Uh, so open air uh, is making a, a really uh, intense effort to uh, aggregate, clean, and uh, duplicate a lot of records that uh, come from different uh, institutional repositories, uh, open access journals and publishers, registries, other aggregators, quiz systems, uh, but also very large uh, bibliometric and uh, scholar databases and scholarly uh, knowledge bases like uh, open citations, like uh, ORCID, Microsoft Academic, Datasite, uh, Crossref, and so on. And the result is uh, a graph, a knowledge graph, uh, that contains uh, uh, valuable information related to research products like publications, data, software, and other types of uh, research uh, objects. Uh, data sources that can provide uh, uh, useful metadata uh, for research products and research-related entities, uh, grants, uh, organizations, research performance, or research funding organizations, uh, communities, people. So uh, the Open Air Graph uh, is trying to be, uh, is trying to act as the complete map of science in a sense, uh, containing both uh, uh, information about uh, open science outputs and the related entities, but not only that, uh, it is trying to uh, contain uh, every um, output uh, of the research community at large. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, this uh, wealth of information kept inside this graph, uh, of course, is useful uh, for open air so that it can provide uh, the various uh, services uh, like uh, the open air monitor, uh, or the Open Air Explorer, uh, but at the same time uh, can be useful for other uh, people, for third party uh, developers, uh, so that they could uh, develop added value services on top of this resource. And uh, this is why Open Air, uh, which is dedicated to the mission and the vision of open science, makes all this uh, content uh, openly available uh, for everyone. And uh, the way that uh, the research community can exploit uh, these contents, uh, apart from uh, the services that OpenAir is pr providing to the research community, uh, is through 
uh, the open data sets that are being available uh, in the Open Air Graph website uh, and uh, the APIs. And as I already mentioned, the most important API uh, until now uh, was the search API. Uh, so although the Open Air Search API um, is in a production mode uh, for a couple of years, uh, for several years, um, we um, were aware uh, of some problems uh, and uh, some missing fe features that uh, it had. Uh, a couple of uh, different uh, issues uh, when someone would like to use it uh, to develop uh, value-added services on top of the graph. I will just mention here um, the most important of, the, of those issues that we have identified based on the experience and the feedback that uh, we have received from uh, the large number of users that we already had. So, uh, the native uh, format for the API responses uh, was an XML format. Uh, however, um, today, uh, most uh, developers uh, are using JSON. And um, in general, uh, there are a lot of uh, um, Python or other uh, libraries that uh, can do a really nice job. Uh, to uh, parse uh, JSON uh, data. Uh, so although uh, the search API was offering the JSON format, and uh, this was one of the popular uh, formats uh, for people using the search API, uh, this format was automatically generated uh, based on the transformation from the XML native uh, format. And uh, this kind of transformation uh, was creating difficulties uh, in parsing. So there were various parts of uh, that JSON format that yeah. were not optimized. Just an indicative example, there were fields that uh, sometimes could be arrays, uh, in other times could be uh, arrays of strings, in other times, times they could be uh, just strings, uh, just based on their respective record if the record contained for this field more than one entities uh, related uh, this was an array otherwise it was a string and this uh, would require from the developer side a lot of effort to handle these special cases and this is just an indicative example so the bottom line of that is that we were aware that most people that are using the api would like to use the JSON format. And uh, the, the JSON format that we were providing was not perfect and to, was creating some problems to them while they were trying to uh, parse uh, the respective responses. Uh, another problem was uh, related to the fact that the endpoints, the parameters, and the fields uh, of this uh, Open Air Search API um uh, we're not using uh the names uh that uh, uh have uh, were um the, the names from the graph uh, data model so uh, if you were aware if you are aware of uh, the opener graph uh, you should know uh, that there is a documentation website explaining in much detail about the various entity types that the Open Air Graph is supporting, and for each of them, the various fields, uh, which are the respective uh, uh, dom domains for the values, uh, which are the uh, different vocabularies used. Uh, so um, this is a base, the basic uh, graph data model, and uh, in some cases, uh, the field names in the uh, responses or uh, the parameter names uh, in the endpoints 
were not 100% aligned uh, with the names used uh, in the graph data model. And this, of course, was creating confusion to the end users, while the, uh, especially for those that were experimenting both uh, with the APIs and the data sets, because the data set was following this model, but the APIs uh, had parameters with different names or fields uh, with different names. And also, uh, this was creating difficulties in documentation because, as you may uh, suspect, um, if uh, uh, you have different parameter names and field names, it's not easy to redirect the user to one single point of documentation. You need to explain uh, the mappings between uh, the parameters and the field names uh, to uh, those fields and entity types uh, that are included inside the basic graph data model. Um, finally, um, this was a basic, uh, a basic API uh, trying to cover some basic needs uh, that have been identified in the past. Uh, but based on the experience uh, and the request that we have uh, uh, received in the past by our end users, uh, there were some important features missing. So uh, there were some endpoints that would be useful, for instance, endpoints related uh, to organizations that were missing. It was not possible to... Uh, try to retrieve information about uh, research organizations in the previous API, uh, but also some very useful filtering, uh, filtering options or some very useful fields uh, were not present or were not uh, given in a convenient format. So all these uh, make it apparent to us that uh, there was a need for a new and improved API, the Graph API. And uh, we tried to uh, target uh, the previous problems. We uh, focused on providing a simplified JSON format for the responses uh, that would be easier to consume. Uh, we uh, enhanced, we uh, aimed to enhance the compatibility uh, of the API uh, with the graph data model. Uh, we put some effort to improve the documentation. So we have improved the respective section uh, in the graph documentation website. We have also made uh, a Swagger UI available uh, for testing and uh, for additional documentation. And finally, uh, we have uh, creating created new endpoints, uh, parameters and fields, and improved some of the functionalities in existing uh, parameters. And speaking of these uh, new functionalities uh, that we aim to provide, uh, I have included here the most important ones. Uh, we would like to simplify the endpoints uh, about research products because in the past, we had uh, a couple of them as a generic one uh, that could be used for any type of research product, but then also uh, some specific ones uh, for each of the different types of research products. So we simplified that into merging everything into one uh, endpoint that could be uh, configured in a way to return uh, to, to cover all these needs. Uh, we have added uh, some extra endpoints uh, for organizations and data sources. And uh, we try to also enhance the, the search functionalities uh, for research products, for example, supporting searching uh, research products uh, based on organizations, something that was not supported, supported in the past. Um, and uh, we had also two other features. Uh, that uh, will be released in this first uh, version of the Opener Graph API, uh, but were not available at the time of the beta testing. 
uh, but we tried to to get some feedback about uh, the value of those uh, features by the beta testers through a questionnaire. And these two main uh, additional features were were uh, the implementation of a cursor pagination uh, mechanism that uh, could facilitate uh, <clears throat> the retrieval of the complete set of the, re the results, uh, something that was uh, bothering a lot uh, developers in the past, and uh, the support uh, to retrieve relationships. Uh, this is uh, also a very a uh, highly requested feature. Um, there are various types of relationships uh, between research products and other entities uh, that um, um, our end users would like to, to get through our APIs. And uh, there were limitations regarding that in the past. We plan to support this uh, in the new API uh, in a more complete way. And uh, when uh, we were ready uh, to provide the first uh, beta version of that, uh, we have decided uh, to follow a process of beta testing. Uh, so in, in late June 2024, uh, we started uh, with some internal testing, asking uh, OpenAir members that they are also using the current APIs for uh, internal purposes uh, to look at the specification, experiment a little bit uh, with uh, the new API and provide some feedback. And then in early July 2024, uh, we have announced a call for beta testers uh, to uh, give them early access uh, to the beta API, uh, try to run some queries and uh, identify potential problems, bugs, or uh, missing features. Uh, the end of this uh, beta testing phase uh, was uh, in late August. So people had more than one month uh, for experimentation. Uh, with this beta version of the new API. Uh, we have used a ticketing mechanism to collect requests uh, for new features or bugs. And uh, I will show you the results of that uh, ticketing uh, approach uh, in a while. Uh, but we have also uh, created uh, an extra questionnaire uh, that was shared with uh, the beta testers at the end of uh, the process, uh, attempting to receive additional feedback on the experience that they had, uh, but also, as I mentioned, uh, in the value of uh, existing features and uh, of uh, some forth forthcoming ones. Uh, based on this uh, uh, timeline, uh, we plan to release uh, the first uh, production uh, ready version of uh, the new API by the end of the year. So we are very close to that right now. At uh, the current uh, phase, we are analyzing the output, uh, the feedback that we received from the beta testers. And uh, we are finalizing some changes and improvements to uh, the APIs before announcing the final release. Uh, now, regarding some very basic statistics for the beta testing, uh, 13, 13 beta testers have been selected to pa participate uh, to the process. And based on a questionnaire that we have shared uh, with them, uh, about 60% of them were already using uh, the existing graph API. So this was a, a very nice um, variety of people. Some of them were not aware uh, of the previous uh, graph API. Others, however, uh, had some experience. 
Now, uh, based on this uh, beta testing, uh, we have uh, received uh, various bugs and uh, requests for new features. Here I am reporting uh, the most important ones. Uh, so we had, uh, I I'm going through the list because we have invited uh, the beta testers to be uh, here today and I hope that uh, we have some of them to discuss about details if needed for some of the, those uh, bugs and features. Now about the bugs, uh, we have uh, fixed everything reported uh, um, with the exception of one last bug that uh, we are currently fixing. Um, I don't think that it is important to go into details about those bugs. Uh, but then about new features, we have received a lot of uh, feedback. Um, some of them uh, have, have been already implemented or being implemented as we speak and will be part uh, of the initial release uh, of the APIs. Uh, some others, we are currently in the process of analyzing how they can be supported and if they can uh, be supported. Uh, like, uh, for instance, uh, the request for an endpoint to collect community information. This is something that we are not currently uh, supporting and uh, we are in the process of uh, evaluating uh, the uh, usefulness of something like that and uh, uh, the importance. Another such example is uh, that uh, some people would like to get more information about uh, the status of the harvesting process that we follow uh, for the different uh, data sources uh, in the data source endpoint so that this would be a more useful um, a, a more useful endpoint uh, so we are currently analyzing uh, our options regarding that and the most likely that is that very soon maybe not in the first version but maybe in some of the next ones we are going to support this type of uh, requests. Uh, but there are also some other features like, for instance, uh, creating API request uh, based on an explore page. So if someone is using the Opener Explorer, is browsing some results and getting back a list of uh, papers, for instance, a list of uh, research pro uh, products, it would be nice uh, to have a button uh, to reveal the API call that uh, could uh, get back this uh, exact set of results that would be useful uh, so that they, it could help people experiment a little bit on the UI of Explore and then uh, try to draft some queries uh, to get this type of input uh, in a more structured uh, way. Uh, we have all we had already in our backlog that uh, feature to be given in the second phase in 2025, but it was also reported by some of the um, beta testers that we had. Uh, and finally, we have some other features like, for instance, uh, giving the opportunity to filter based on uh, FOS and SDG confidence weights. Uh, this cannot be done uh, because uh, uh, the uh, particular classifications uh, are provided to us by the teams that uh, they calculate them uh, without providing a confidence score. So uh, without changing the way that the SDGs and the FOS classifications are produced, we can support uh, a request like this. But this is a limitation of the algorithm that uh, is producing those classifications. So just to summarize, um, whenever it was possible and easy uh, to implement uh, a new feature, we have already done it. We are at the process of, of analyzing a couple of additional uh, features, and we are uh, hopeful that uh, this will be supported, some of them uh, in the initial version, others in the second phase. And for the bugs, because this is very important, um, we are going to uh, deliver a first version that uh, has resolved all the bugs reported. 
Now, as I said, uh, we have also uh, received uh, feedback based on the questionnaire at the end of the process. So uh, there are various evaluation points uh, that we got some feedback. Uh, it seems like the simplified JSON response was a very good uh, change. Uh, the API in general uh, was reported that it's easy to use. Um, the coverage of the endpoints was adequate, but not perfect. But in any case, we may need to add additional such endpoints. Uh, the filtering options as well, adequate, but maybe there is uh, some room for improvement. Uh, and in general, the experience uh, of uh, the beta testers was positive. Uh, they reported that uh, they are very, uh, it is very likely that they will recommend uh, the API to uh, another person or um, they were very happy with the support they got during the beta testing uh, from the opener team. Uh, as I said, we also used the same questionnaire to collect some feedback about the tools, uh, functionalities that uh, we had under implementation, the cursor pagination, the relationship retrieval, and in both cases, the feedback uh, was good. So these features seem to be uh, very good additions uh, to the current API. And just a statistic about uh, what uh, the beta testers reported about uh, the way that they have interacted with the API. Uh, it seems like most of them uh, have uh, used uh, a limited number of uh, queries uh, to perform their evaluation, 10 to 50. Uh, but there were uh, some of them that put a lot of effort uh, trying to test uh, more than 50 uh, queries. So the only thing that uh, I would like to, to comment on this slide is that there is a relatively borderline uh, score about uh, the satisfaction uh, related to documentation. So the Swagger UI va uh, value was uh, good, uh, but on the other hand, uh, it seems like uh, there was uh, some uh, need to improve the documentation of the API. Um, because of this marginal score, I think there were some issues that uh, the beta testers had in mind. So if uh, we have some of the, those beta testers today with us um, in this meeting, it would be nice if we could discuss about that and see what would be the problem of the documentation, what is missing and uh, uh, what we can do about that. And with that said, I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, you can find here various uh, useful uh, links to our uh, uh, websites and forums, uh, but also my contact details. Uh, this is the presentation that I would like to make, but now is uh, the time uh, for the open discussion. Uh, so uh, I will start uh, with this particular uh, subject that I mentioned. So uh, this reporting that the documentation uh, would benefit for some improvements. And I would like to invite if we have any beta testers uh, here today with us uh, to comment on that and uh, report on whether they agree or not with the uh, average uh, evaluation of uh, that aspect or not. Uh, so if they feel like the documentation could be improved, it would be nice also to hear uh, which are the uh, most uh, important uh, comments that they have regarding that. So anyone?
I know that um, I have seen some of the beta testers uh, that have joined the meeting. So if, if you can share just quick thoughts about that or anything else based on your experience with the beta phase, uh, it would be nice to hear your stories here and your uh, feedback. So if you would like to speak, you can unmute directly and speak up. And I add that if you don't wish to be recorded, we can edit the the the, the part where you speak before um, uploading it on uh, on YouTube. So don't worry about it. Thanks, Stefania. Hello, Beatrice Koponak from Finland is speaking. Nice to see you and hear you. The development, actually, the the, the uh, your presentation, listening. So, I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, representing Finland Alto University, and actually we are working with CSC with our co-partner to 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 get Alto universities data sets and, and, and publications to open IRA. So actually, uh, how um, I have just the question, how can I uh, get or, or be a beta tester? Because we heard from our collaborator and our uh, partner CSE that we can, we can be a beta tester. So I, I haven't got any notification or information on how can I be. So can someone help to get or, or yeah. share the information? Okay, uh, thank you first of all for the interest uh, in that. Uh, as I mentioned, the official campaign for the beta testing uh, has been announced, uh, uh, I think it was in early July, but maybe even earlier. I'm not sure about that. When the article was out, there was a call about uh, beta testers and there was a process uh, through a form uh, to um, submit your, to, to apply for uh, a beta tester. Uh, although, however, this uh, whole beta testing phase has ended, uh, the, beta, the beta API infrastructure is, is still in place and can be used. And of course, we would really like uh, to exploit any additional feedback uh, oh. if uh, there is some from uh, other people. So if you are interested in that, um, since the form now is closed, I would suggest to send a relevant email to Stefania and me and uh, Alena or someone of us expressing oh. your interest. And we can give you some instructions on how you can access uh, this beta infrastructure of the new API uh, so that you can test it. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, it's the period actually, July, uh, beginning of August is the period uh, uh, of holiday. So I was exactly this period of holiday. This is why I haven't got your, I suppose, your information. Yeah. And, and when I was back in 12th of August to work, so it would be maybe already too late yes thank you yes, very much it was yeah we have in finland we have in the northern countries the saying nothing grows in in july in finland because everyone is on holiday <laughs> you know? yeah yeah no yeah uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you are right from the the center mid of and and southern europe yes yeah you're right about that and just to try to alleviate this problem, we try to give a lot of time so that there are some days in July, but also in August, so that we can uh, have uh, people uh, in office uh, at least for some days. But yes, the timing maybe was not perfect. But mm. in any case, as I said, we can give you access to this uh, beta testing. This is also true for everyone. Uh, everyone interested can ask mm. via email and they can get access. And we have also in place the same ticketing mechanism. We will let you know about that, how you can provide okay. feedback for uh, requested features and improvements. Thank you very much. I will uh, send to, to Stefania share the email addresses. So if it's possible, I, I, I would like to test it. Thank you very much. Thank you again. So, Anyone else that would like to ask something, uh, everything?
uh, or comment on the uh, things that I mentioned. Yes, Andreas. <clears throat> uh, we cannot. Hello. Hear you. Ah. Hello. <laughs> good. Um, good morning. So good morning. I will take the icebreaker <laughs> uh, for question for questions. So um, I have a question not regarding the testing uh, of the new API, uh, but it's very interesting. Um, and uh, thank you for for the valuable um, useful insights of this and uh, for for the in the new graph graph api um i have two questions uh one is did, uh, is uh, related to the graph and the entities the graph has uh, including includes uh, different entities like publications data sets funding projects and and so on and uh, I would like to know if um, the opportunity to um, harvesting projects from Chris endpoints is also um, in your planning phase, because uh, in the OpenAI Chris guidelines, there is um, the entity of uh, projects um, that are um, in their CRIS systems of organizations or institutions and could be harvested at the end in, uh, from the endpoint. And will these information available in the graph um, from those endpoints as well? And uh, is there any, any timeline for this? This is my first question. Okay, so um, regarding uh, the support of the API to provide grant information in general, uh, this is uh, possible. Uh, there is a dedicated uh, endpoint for projects. Uh, but if I understand correctly your question, uh, you are referring to some content that uh, comes specifically for particular data sources like CRIS systems. Uh, so if that is the case, uh, my first comment is that uh, everything that uh, is included in the graph uh, related to entities like grants project uh, is available uh, through the API as well. Uh, but if this is related to any content that we are not currently considering uh, to create those entities inside the graph, then I would prefer to give the mic to, uh, to Claudio to comment on that if he knows more, because I'm not completely aware of such a problem. So was the question about the availability from the API of contents that you know that they are already in the graph? Or is it related to missing some content from some sources currently in the graph? Thank you. It's uh, for more clarification. It's uh, the missing ones from uh, data sources um, because some data sources are could could be a CRIS system, research information system, and uh, these. CRIS systems are exposing metadata regarding publications, uh, product or uh, data sets, and, and so on, as well as project information. And I would like to know if this information will be used or is used in the meantime in the graph. Um, and uh, of course, will expose to the APIs, to the different user interfaces. And so okay. So, so if there is in the graph, they will be exposed. But uh, to answer your question, uh, Claudio, can you maybe provide any insights regarding that? Are we already exploiting the 
uh, grant information that we can get from Chris Systems. Uh, is there any pending issue regarding that? Hi, you all. Uh, glad to to be here and support the discussion. And nice to hear Andreas uh, once again. Um, the, well, I would not call it an issue. It's a matter of policy. So far, Open Air has done a careful selection of the funders providing grant information. And in order to expand to other uh, kind of systems providing information about the project grants, we need to carefully verify that there are no uh, overlaps in, in the information we get. So uh, I think we could start uh, approaching this uh, by uh, selecting some pilot cases, uh, but carefully scrutinizing what kind of grant information they do expose if they cover a single funder, for example, or maybe they span across various funders. This would be a crucial aspect to know beforehand. Um, but I don't see uh, strong technical limitations in doing so. I mean, uh, Open Air has quite several building blocks to accommodate, at least on the technical level, uh, the use case. But it should be part of the details for sure. The typical case I can imagine would be a CRIS system exposing national uh, grants and only those. This would perfectly fit, uh, I think, the current setting that we have. Yeah, thank you very much. So I'm um, thinking about how, what open air needs to be forward on this sides of um, to integrate projects from um, Chris systems because Chris systems are mostly in the universities or uh, other academic um, organizations are a trusted source. And um, what what will what are, what is need to be go forward on this side from open air side uh, to have these projects in the graph. Um, let us discuss it um, um, offline. Um, yes. another, que another question is also regarding the uh, new entity which, which, coming, uh, which I see coming up in this year um, because on the availability uh, in the data site XEMA uh, the entity is uh, our instruments and equipments. And is there any plan to have instruments, equipments in the graph as well? Um, as far as I know, uh, there is nothing regarding that uh, planned uh, for the near future. But again, uh, I will give the mic to uh, Claudio in case uh, he has more information on that and I'm missing something. Uh, I think the effort, the recent efforts in terms of capturing uh, the scientific outputs or, well, uh, entities that are somehow related to the scientific outputs are pushing to adopt the most recent version of the core vocabulary. It's not there yet. It's still an ongoing process as, uh, well, you know, there are, there is quite a volume of different crosswalk and mappings to capture the details of, of the incoming uh, typologies of research products. Uh, so for the moment, uh, I support what Tanazi said. It's not uh, in a, the open air horizon to support the instruments, uh, but uh, I think it should uh, be included first uh, in the standard vocabulary that Panel is trying to comply with now. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you, thank, Claudio. Thank, thank you very much, Claudio Thanasis, um, for this uh, insight as well. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, any other question?
Okay, so um, yes, uh, also what Julia mentions is a, a good point that uh, the provide community call uh, can uh, also be a good venue to discuss these kind of questions that Andrea has had. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to mention that uh, the current uh, Open Air Graph documentation website uh, contains more information about uh, this new API. So if you are interested uh, to know more about what is currently supported and uh, how you can use it, uh, you can go there and uh, uh, go through the different pages. Um, the main aspects regarding how you get access to the APIs will remain the same, which means there is an open access uh, for the API with some uh, limits in the uh, rate of uh, requests. And then if you are registered and use a token, uh, you can have uh, a larger number of uh, requests, requests per per hour that you can perform. Um, and as I said, in general, the beta testing environment is still up and running. So if you are interested uh, to test uh, this uh, beta version of the new APIs, uh, just let us know. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Stefania, no, Julia has already uh, copied the emails of me, Stefani and uh, Alena in the chat here, so you can send an email to any of us or to all of us uh, requesting access and we are going to um, uh, guide you through the process on getting access and how to provide some feedback. Uh, as always, Open Air uh, is trying to exploit uh, the community uh, we truly believe uh, that involving the research community uh, at large uh, in a process of testing and uh, providing feedback is always the best uh, option. And this is why uh, we had followed this uh, process that I described here. And of course, uh, at any point, uh, we would like to get additional feedback, even some generic ideas that you may have now and you can uh, speak about them, or uh, if you would like to get energy access to the beta testing. I don't know if there is anything else. Uh, I think we are approaching the last minutes uh, of uh, the call, the last five minutes. So I'm not sure if there is any other question that we can answer. Last call for a final question. Yes, yes. we can stop recording.